Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about transitions and how to use the use transition and the use deferred value hooks in React 18. So what I have on my screen is a name searching program and all it essentially does is as I type a name like so, it starts to filter through a list of results, right? And it shows them on the screen. And it's based on the prefix. So see I've got DA in the input, it shows every name with DA, well starting with DA, okay? And that's it, right? Now this is a pretty straightforward program. All it does is it captures a piece of state for the input that I appear. And that's basically wired on the on change event of the input. So on change, set filter, and then it just updates that piece of state, right? And then once it does that, it has new piece of state. It then gets the filtered list here in line, right? And ultimately passes it to some search results, which then basically renders it down here, right? Just renders a bunch of divs on the screen, which you saw with the name in it. Now, the scary part here is this filter names function, right? Because we're doing some filtering on a result set, or we will be on a result set. So if I look at the filter names function, which is in this util.js, you'll see that it's going through a list of names, which I've imported up here. And for each name, it's just checking to see if it starts with the filter, right? This list of names though, is locally defined and it's got currently about 660,000-ish names in there, right? So it's a lot of names to scan through and do this, you know, name filter dot to lowercase comparison check, right? So on my machine, obviously we don't notice that, but if we're using a slower machine, say I reduce the performance here to maybe six times slower, and I start typing in letters, so I go D, you see how long that took from the minute I said the letter D, which is when I typed it on my keyboard, to the moment it showed up in the input, there was about a two second delay roughly, roughly, right? And the other thing that you would have noticed is that it shows up at the exact same time the results do. So again, if I type the letter D, right, right now, you'll see that again, two seconds before it actually showed up in the input. That's not great user experience, right? So you start typing really quickly, you'll see that nothing comes up for a while, right? So we don't really want that experience. We want a better experience than that. And even when I press backspace, you can see it's really slow. So how do we solve this problem with React 18? Well, we could do it in a number of ways, really. We could basically say, well, we're not gonna have all the names filtered locally, and we're not gonna, have a filter function that goes and filters all these objects in memory and that we call it from the server, we get page results and we only go through a small subset of data, right? That would be the optimal way. But let's say we don't have those options at the moment and we're like, okay, we have to optimize it locally, right? And we need the best experience we can get. Well, before React 18, there wasn't really a lot we could do. We could maybe try things like use memo, or we could use use callback and at least reduce the number of times that the, the data had to be fetched or something. But in the case of this application, the filtering has to happen every single time, right? So I don't think those approaches would work either. So what we can do now in React 18 is we can take advantage of transitions. So let's see how those work. Okay, so you can see on my screen, I've got pretty much the same form I had a moment ago, except I just add the word transition here instead of default. And that's just to indicate we're working with the transition example. Now, before we get into transitions, we need to just quickly talk about how updates work in components in React, right? Now, most of you probably know this, but whenever you make a change to some state in a component, it re-renders the component, right? And if that component has any children, in this case, search results, they also get re-rendered, right? Because they're children of this component. In this situation, an input is also considered a child because it has its own state. So as I type in here, you know, it has its own state to update the input, right? So I just want to quickly point that out. So 
at the moment, this is sluggish. Why? It's sluggish because every single function executes from the top to the bottom, right? So when it hits this filter names function, there's a delay. And there's a delay because of the fact that this takes a while to execute, which means nothing else below it can be executed, which is why we get that sluggish behavior because the UI is getting rendered a lot later because of the delay here, right? So we need a way to say, okay, this name filter, can we delay when it's actually updated, right? Even though we've typed in this input field, can we delay its, its, its value being updated until the input has been updated, right? So the input is the urgent update that we need to have first, and then we can focus on updating this state which will ultimately update the search results, okay? So that's kind of what we're going for, and that's why we need this transition state or this transition uh, update, right, I should say, to achieve this, right? So what we we're really trying to say here is whenever we update this name filter, we want this to happen secondary to the input, and we can achieve this by using transitions. Now, the first way of doing this is to use the start transition function that's inside the React library. And you just wrap it around the setter for the state update. So we can go start transition like so, and we have a callback. And inside that callback, we just delay the execution of that set name filter, right? So what this will do now is when this input, you type into this input, it will go and update itself. And then once it's done updating itself because it's deemed an urgent update, then we'll go through the process of executing the transition function or transaction, transition component, sorry, to update the filter, all right? And what that means is if I save this and we'll give it a nice little refresh just to be safe, what you're going to notice is as I type the letter now, and I'm gonna say it out loud, D, see that it came up immediately, and then the list of results came after that, right? Because now we've skipped a render of transition because we did not deem it as urgent and we deemed it a transitional update. We skipped going through it once. We made sure the input could update itself first because it was an urgent update. And then we came back and said, okay, now you can go through and render yourself. Right, which also kind of renders the input the second time, but you don't really notice that, right? So that's basically what transitions are, and that's how you can create a very simple transition, okay? But this is only the start. So the other thing that you should be looking for when you do transitions is now that you're introducing this update delay, you may have times where you may wanna show a spinner or a loader or something to that nature, to indicate that there is a bit of a delay between typing the letters and the results showing up, okay? And we can achieve this by using the use transition hook, all right? So this is very similar. It's almost the same, except it's a hook. So just under uh, the, or I'll probably put it at the top here. I'll go const, and I'm gonna have a, an array like so, and I'm gonna call use transition, right? like so. And the first value of the structured array is the pending state, right? And I'll get back to what that is in a minute. And then the second value is your start transition function, right? So we've got that now. So now it works again down here and everything should pretty much work the same as it did before. So if we start going D, again, you see the D instantly comes in and the results are shown after, right? Now, the cool thing is with this pending state is that this will stay true until such time that we're ready to render the results, right? Until we're ready to render the component based on the update of this piece of state, right? So the cool thing about this is we can use this as a property to, let's say the search results, which I have set up ahead of time a pending prop here, and it will now show a loading uh, div 
just in front of the results, right? So if I now save this, and we give it a nice little refresh again, and now I type the letter D, you'll see that we get a little loading state there before we get our results now, which is beautiful. And as I type, so if I put more letters in, you'll see that the loading pops up. Yeah, it's pretty quick now, but you can see that it's still there, right? Every time I type a letter, the input is being updated immediately and then following by the update to the actual list, right? And that creates this situation where we have a bit better experience with our input and then we ultimately can see that something's going on with our app, right? And that's the main reason for using transitions. Now, just be careful that you only want to use this in situations like this where you need an urgent update, you know, rather than, you know, all the time where we try to say, okay, we're just going to throw everything and start transition because then you're kind of undoing what, you, what you're doing here. You put giving everything the same priority and you're gonna get the same outcome as you would have if you didn't use start transition. So you only use start transition in situations where you need an urgent update in one UI element and you don't need as much of an update or urgent update in another UI element. And they happen to be, you know, if not the same component, roughly in the same area, right? The same tree, we'll say. Um, so yeah, so that's pretty much how you can use transitions to update your UI elements. Now, there's one more approach, and we'll take a look at that, and that is the use deferred value hook. Okay, so I had pretty much the same form I had just a moment ago, except I made one slight tweak, or a couple of slight tweaks, to be honest. Uh, what I did was, if I type in a letter now, you'll see that we get this message here that says results for whatever I typed in as well as the original list of names, right? Now, I'm currently just using start transition to create that delay that we saw, right? So we're still getting that letter that's being added to the input and then the results come later. But that introduces the problem of this message being delayed as well, right? So if I type in the letter D like so, wouldn't it be nice if this message could be updated at the same time as we type into this input. And then the results can come after, okay? So obviously by using start transition, what we're doing is we're delaying the update of this piece of state, right? So it's not actually gonna re-render the component until a little bit later after we've in, uh, changed this input. So that means this input is always gonna be updated before anything else on the screen at this stage. We can't have that because we want to have this input update itself at the same time as this input. So we can't use start transition in this situation. We just can't do it, right? It's just not possible. So we have to go back to the old conventional set name filter, but that's gonna give us that same delay issue that we spoke about at the start, right? So if I now refresh the screen, like so, and I type the letter D, you'll see there's a delay and then everything pops up, including the input, right? Even the input comes up at the same time. So we're back to square one. Now, can we solve this problem? The answer is yes. We can use this hook called use deferred value and we can apply it to just this filtered list here, right? What that means is, is that we can defer the rendering of this input based on a different piece of state to what we're using to update this and this, right? So how it works is like this. When you first load your component, right? Your state is going to have a default value. Most likely it could be undefined. In this case, it's an empty string. Now, when you first load for the very first time, you're going to have an old value and a new value, which are exactly the same value, which is empty here. So when you render it the next time, right after you've updated the set name filter so if i type the letter d what's going to happen behind the scenes with react is they're going to hold on to the current value which is going to be stored in name filter and they're also going to hold on to what was the previous value which would have been empty string right so if we want to access this empty string right we can do that by just doing this you can go const deferred name filter 
equals use deferred value name filter, all right? So when we use this hook, and I'll just, I'll import it in from React like so. When we use this hook, now we're getting access to what the previous value was prior to the current render, right? So the first render, this would be empty string because it's empty string for the current and the previous value. But on an update, so I type the letter D, the name filter will be D. The deferred name filter will be based on what the current one is, but this will return empty string because that was the previous value. Now, why is this important? Well, if we look at this filter name function, right, we see that when we first load the application, it loaded pretty quickly. Now it loaded pretty quickly because you state had an empty string, right? And this filter names function, well, when it detects there's nothing to, uh, there's no input to return an empty array, okay? So on the first entry, it's going to go, yeah, okay, I don't need to render anything, fantastic. On the second entry, i.e. after we've pressed the letter D, the name filter is gonna update to D, Normally, before we'd used it, so we haven't yet applied it to filter names yet, but before, when we had it set to name filter, it would now grab the D and it would filter on D, which creates that slowness, right? So then the code will halt on this line. But because we're using a previous value initially, right, to get around the fact that we just typed the letter D, this is still gonna be fast, right? So it's gonna skip and then it's gonna to continue to render the rest of the UI. Then it will do a second run because it's detected it's using a use deferred value hook. It'll do a second run where name filter will now be the old value as well. This will now become D and then eventually it will call filter with the D and render the filtered list, creating that transitional delay, right? So let's apply that, uh, that old value to the filter names function and you'll kind of see what I'm talking about. So if I now save this and I start typing the letter D, now you'll see that the results came up instantly, right? Or the results for D bit came up instantly as well as the input. And then there was a delay in the, what was shown up down here, okay? So if I type the next letter, if I go A, you'll see that these two things updated at the same time, they're a little bit slow, and then eventually the other results came. If I delete the A and we go back to the D, again, these two things updated at the same time, and this one had the delay, right? So we're delaying the execution, or, or we're delaying the state value here, only when it's applying to filtering the results. For everything else, we're using the current value of that filter, to render the UI because we know it's going to be quick. So again, the only time you would use something like use deferred value is when you want to apply it to something that's gonna be slow running and you want it to execute at a later stage than everything else. And that is how you use the use deferred value book. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell and I'll see you all next time.